Welcome to the wonderful world of dance, bringing you exclusive interviews with top dancers and choreographers and reviews of the world's best companies across the globe. You can find lots more on our website at thewonderfulworldofdance.com. Hi, this is Savannah Saunders from The Wonderful World of Dance, and today I'm excited to be talking with the founder of Ballet United, Tom Matard Monchet. Ballet United aims to show people the power and relevance of dance whilst also shining a light on the next generation of dancers. Ballet United is presenting a gala on the 19th of July in London at the beautiful Cadogan Hall. You can get your tickets to see some of the best dancers from the best companies at balletunited.com. For one night, one night only, Ballet United brings together dancers from the Royal Ballet, Paris Opera Ballet, Dutch National, Northern Ballet, Norwegian National, Vienna State and the Rome Opera Ballet. Welcome, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us. So, Tom, before we talk about Ballet United, tell us about your own dance career. When did you start dancing and where did you grow up? So I was actually born in New York and that's where I kind of was exposed to dance at a very young age. And I wanted to do it as soon as, as, soon as I was really three years old, really. But then it wasn't until I came to London at about five years old that I started doing ballet classes with the girls in my local, in my primary school. And then from there, I kind of grew to really love it and knew that at, from the age of 11, that's what I wanted to do as a career. So I went to the arts educational school, Tring, for five years. And then at 16, I moved to St. Petersburg to train with a, a teacher from Vaganova for a few months before then going to the Paris Conservatoire for a further three years. Wow, that's a, an incredible training journey for such a young dancer and to be studying quite different techniques at such mm -hmm. a young age. How did, how did you sort of go from the different techniques? How was that for you? Yeah, that was actually really difficult because going to St. Petersburg, everything that I had learned in England and arts educational school to the teacher that I had was useless and not relevant. And the only school that was good was the Russian school. So that was kind of starting from square one at, the, at, the, at that time. So then after a few months, I just kind of realized that St. Petersburg wasn't the place that I wanted to stay. So then I auditioned for the Paris Conservatoire and got into that school. And that was a whole other situation because the French school wasn't so keen on the Russian school. It was a very different thing. So they wanted to kind of start me from square one again. So it was a lot of kind of starting, rebuilding. And, but I think the whole experience has made my technique the way that it is. And I'm able to adapt to different people. And when you finished your ballet training, what company did you end up joining first? So actually, um, in Paris, we have the Junior Ballet, which I didn't do. I went to New York after that straight away, um, where I was originally born and from. And I thought, because I met Maxime Balasakovsky and Irina Dvorenko, who are a couple from ABT. And Maxime had just, I think, just retired that year or the year before. And he was starting to teach. And so we, we kind of spoke and we discussed that I wanted to come back to America, potentially audition there and work with him. So I started working with Maxime for like every single day for about a year actually. And I had a couple of injuries which prevented me from auditioning. Um, and then I did a couple of little freelance things in New York before coming back to London to do New, New English Ballet Theatre for a few months. And then I went back to Paris after that and did a contract at Paris Opera in an opera, dancing in an opera. And then, yeah, then I came back to London. Now I got glandular fever, which is why I started Ballet United. Oh, goodness, glandular fever. That's quite serious, isn't it? I think just physically, I was just unable to do what I was doing before. So it kind of put a halt on everything. So I kind of just wanted to be proactive and use my time to the best that I could. So tell us about, um, well, before we talk more about Ballet United, yeah. I just, I'm interested to learn, you've, you've traveled quite, you know, around the world and you've danced with um, some very different companies and very different schools. Mm -hmm. Having glandular fever must have been quite a shock for someone who's used to, like you say, going into the studio every single day and working so hard. How has that affected you, if you're happy to talk about that? Yeah, definitely. I think every dancer knows that when you get that first injury or whatever it is that you offer a couple months, mentally it's one of the hardest, hardest things. Just because you're so used to that routine and you wake up and you do your class and it's like that, that routine that you've done every day since you're a little kid. And when that stops, it's really, yeah, it's really, every dancer, I don't know how to describe it, but you know how difficult it is when you've been through an injury or something like that where you can't do it. Um, but it definitely changes you and makes you a much, much stronger person because you kind of have to pull 
different aspects of yourself to get through that and stay positive. And how are you expecting to go back to darting full time professionally? Is that your expectation? Definitely. And I'm, I feel like health now is at a stage. I got this in our, like, October time. So the first kind of, even now, it's, it's day by day, but it's much, much better than it was. So I'm trying to get back now. And well, with this, all of this going on in the event in a few weeks, it's the time. I don't have that much time. But yeah, uh, hopefully after this, I'll get back to it properly. So then tell us about Ballet United. You say, you know, having, um, needing to take time off of your career, this is been the reason you've started Ballet United but tell us what the inspiration is where did you get the idea where did you come up with this so I think when I got around to the fever it was kind of what do I want to do now with my time that would be most beneficial um and I just kind of thought all this time that I've been dancing I meet so many people like my sister they all do different they all work in different industries and they're always so interested in dance and ballet but they just never seem to come so I'm like well why don't you come to Paris Opera I'm at this thing and they're like oh we'll come for you I'm like well why don't you come out of your own benefit but they go to different things or cinema so I kind of wanted to do an event that would really kind of engage that younger audience and bring them into a venue that would inspire them and get them interested in ballet. Absolutely I think there is a you know a huge challenge for the dance industry to engage new audiences and I think um, events such as Ballet United that brings together world famous dancers in in a gala format is very appealing because they get to see some of the, the best bits of ballet, some of the best um, variations or the best pas de deux, the best dancers all, all on one night. It's almost like the best of the best. Definitely. So tell us about who is going to be on stage at Ballet United's Gala in London on the 19th of July. So it was super important for me to have a mix of repertoire, to have like your classics. We have Black Swan pas de deux from a couple from Paris Opera. But then we also have the neoclassical stuff such as Benjamin Milpier's piece, Hans on Manin and a few other new contemporary pieces that we've had commissioned. Um, so we have that mix of repertoire. We have, it's a good question because it adds on every day, but we have 22 dancers now, uh, six musicians, live musicians, and three new pieces. And the, the, the support and the response that you've had from dancers with clearly you know, 22 dancers has obviously been really positive. Mm-hmm. Why do you think it's, in, it, sort of engaging for them as a dancer to want to come and be part of this gala? Uh, when, when I first started in October, <coughs> sorry, I contacted some of my best friends, obviously, and I was like, so for, from Paris and New York and all the different places I live, I was like, hi, I really want to do this gala. I kind of told them my whole ambition for it, what I saw happening and really where I wanted it to go and grow into the future. And they were just totally on board from the beginning. So then we started doing some video projects, which you can see on the website, and just we were just kind of always talking every single day about what we could do with Valley United, how we could take it forward and really engage that audience because it is a concern of m- most major companies and everyone's trying to kind of achieve that. I was like, how can we as young people ourselves do that? So they were on board from the beginning and then it just kind of, as soon as the social media started, more people kind of got involved. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's interesting to hear, um, as you say, that even young dancers are concerned about engaging young audiences and I think it's really interesting that you as a young dancer is all uh, are trying to is trying to solve that problem or can contribute to the solution to the cha- that particular challenge mm. um, what other ways do you see Ballet United sort of trying to attract attract new audiences maybe beyond the Ballet Gala or through your website or videos um, it's a very good question and it's one that I'm still, still kind of analyzing and thinking about today Right now, I'm just like in preparation for getting the gala out of the way. But I think definitely live performances need to continue. But um, yeah, I mean, we've got so we've a few companies like young companies. We've wrote to them and they've got their employees to get they got tickets for their employees. So a couple of companies got 30 to 40 for their young employees to kind of be exposed to an artistic cultural event like this. Um, that's one way that we've been doing it. Obviously, the video projects that we've done also, I think, help as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still up for debate, I think, a little bit. We're still kind of figuring it out. Yeah, and I think the industry in general is trying to figure it out. And um, I, on this particular show, we talk a lot about um, the impact of social media and new technologies on dance and being able to reach out and engage new audiences. Mm-hmm. 
particularly those who aren't, like you say, we all know so many people who, you know, they love dance, but they don't go. Exactly. Or they'll go once a year, but they won't um, or can't afford to be able to go and see all the shows that they want to be able to see exactly. or they don't, you know, like the trade-off between the cinema or, you know, going in with friends and et cetera, et cetera. So it's interesting to see that social media is taking off um, sort of exploding dance really yeah. um, and obviously the new show like World of Dance you know that is having yeah. a massive impact in, in the states and across the world so I think hopefully more sort of younger generation will continue to get involved yeah because that that interest is one is definitely definitely there I just feel like somehow it's not being tapped into well enough yeah, I agree. It's sort of, there's no, it doesn't seem to coalesce around um, yeah. one cultural sort of narrative or there's, there is something that isn't sort of pulling that shared love of dance because, you know, dance is in Asia as a human. You know, we all, we yeah. all dance and we love to move and it's in, in, in inherent in us. Um, but, yeah, I would agree. There's sort of more that needs to be done to, yeah, I don't, so it's almost difficult to articulate, actually, exactly. isn't it? Because even with this gala, that word gala, I was trying to get away from it because it just kind of distanced a lot of people as they kind of assumed that it was this elitist thing. So I was very much like, no, you can wear whatever you want. Um, tickets are £15, pounds, the most expensive one. I really made it £45. Pounds. I didn't want to go above that. Um, even so, financially, it's obviously a bit difficult now. But I just didn't want anyone to have the reason of, oh, it's not accessible, we can't afford it, this is for an elite kind of person. Um, so yeah, that was that, and yeah, I just kind of, I thought Kalagan Hall was also a good venue. We looked at so many venues, just in the terms of very centrally located, obviously. But then it's it's you've been there before. I mean, it's beautiful, but I don't think it's this opulent, extravagant kind of place. I think everyone can kind of feel comfortable there. Because some of my friends, even if they were going to big universities, they kind of feel a bit intimidated by these big opera houses. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the the venue I think was important for us also to make sure that it was beautiful but yet so accessible yeah and i think um there is something about you know removing all those barriers mm -hmm. that um people seem to feel around dance like you know being elitism mm -hmm. inaccessible you know i often get when i go with friends or my husband oh is it okay if i wear this yeah exactly. you know or what do i have to wear or yeah. you know it's like well no you can wear anything this is yeah. london you know exactly. you can be who you want to be and and wear whatever you like. You can wear a beautiful gown if that's what you like at the Opera House, or you can go to Saddlers and wear shorts like no one really minds, you know. Some people are like, oh, well, I want to wear this dress that I got to go to this, like, ball thing. I'm like, well, you wear that dress, like, live whatever you want to do. But also, if you, on the other hand, if you want to come in jeans and a T-shirt, I don't mind either. Like, it, I'm, you know, I want you to come and watch and appreciate dance for what it is, not for the show of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so tell us about uh, some of the other performances that people can expect at Ballet United. So you've, heard, you've talked about the Black Swan, Pas de Deux. What, what else can people expect that they might sort of be used to or, or think, oh, I'd like to see, see that? Yeah. Can I actually just get the program piece? I'm not so, I'm no Yeah. Good. It's just on the, because it's, you know, with God, it's constantly changing because someone gets injured or, you know what I mean? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this, actually. Is that okay? Just yeah. hold on a second. I'm going to pause recording. So we have three big classical pas de deux that most people will recognize, like the Sleeping Beauty pas de deux, danced by a couple from Dresden. Um, we have the Grand Prix Classique by a couple from Paris Opera. And then the third one is Black Swan with a couple from Paris Opera again. And then also Valentino Zucchetti, who's a first soloist at the Royal Ballet, is going to do a solo as well as choreograph his own new piece, which is a part of with two dancers, with music by Ilan Ashkeri. Well, that sounds like an ex exciting lineup. My goodness, what a, an amazing collection of dancers, of classical ballets, with some new works. I, I can't wait. I'm absolutely you. You know, looking forward to coming along to the Ballet Gala. So before I go, just one of the questions that I'd, I'd really love to be able to ask you that I always like to ask dancers and uh, dance artists is what advice would you give to um, particularly young male dancers um, 
who are thinking about potentially becoming a professional dancer. And I'm thinking about, um, you know, obviously ballet in general has difficulties on challenges attracting young, mm -hmm. young dancers, but particularly young male dancers. And I know the Royal Academy of Dance are sort of launching a camp or have launched a campaign to try and get the attention of the younger dancers. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, sorry. Okay, that's all right. So I'll, I'll ask that question again. Yeah. Okay. Um, so finally, uh, Tom, I'd love to ask your advice that you would have or words of wisdom for young male dancers, particularly as the ballet industry has uh, some challenges trying to attract, attract new uh, young dancers who, um, and I know the Royal Academy of Dance have launched a campaign to try and attract young male dancers um, to consider becoming professionals. What advice throughout your career or through the experience of setting up Ballet United would you pass on to younger dancers, younger male dancers? Mm -hmm. I would just say, especially for a young male dancer, it's extremely important just to kind of pursue your dreams no matter what people say and just no one can tell you no. I mean, obviously I'm 23, so a lot of people when I started this were saying, oh, like you're too young, you need more experience. But of course you need to be, this whole experience has humbled me a hundred percent, but it's really important just to kind of pursue your dreams and just kind of stay true to yourself. And if you love it, it's your passion. You've got to do it regardless of what people think of you. Oh, absolutely. That's such great advice. And particularly for, as you say, you're, you're only 23. Yeah. You've already danced <clears throat> in various places and here you are hosting an incredible gala in London with some of the most incredible dancers and from the world's top companies. What an achievement at such a young age, particularly when you have your own challenges as well. So congratulations to you. <coughs> uh, <coughs> losing my voice a little here. But so uh, for all of our listeners and for our viewers, I just want to uh, signpost everyone to where they can find out more about Ballet United there is this wonderful, wonderful uh, video that you should watch and I will be posting it, which uh, is all about the Ballet Gala. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so check out balletunited.com and that's where you can book your tickets for the gala on the 19th of July. And Tom, I'm looking forward to coming along. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for this interview. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to all the people that have helped me. With this gala, the dancers, choreographers, Cadogan Hall, our sponsors. It's been like a really incredible journey and I feel like I'm learning a lot. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got some incredible interviews coming up with principal ballerinas and renowned choreographers. We love dance and ballet and we hope you'll love us. Join us on Facebook and Twitter.